Have you ever wondered why the same note sounds so different when played on various instruments? In this video, you'll learn what makes each instrument sound unique. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I'm Kyle, and I'm passionate about the science behind audio. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Audio University, and check out my blog at audiouniversityonline.com. I remember when I was first starting out and learning the science behind audio, this was one of the most puzzling questions. When you play a musical note, the instrument is vibrating at a specific frequency. Let's take the note A, for example. The note A4 on a piano cycles at 440 hertz. That's 440 cycles forward and backward a second. The fundamental frequency 440 hertz also has overtones called harmonics. Harmonics are calculated by adding the fundamental frequency to itself again and again. When you play 440 hertz on an instrument, you're also playing the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and so on. You can play the same fundamental frequency on any instrument, and they'll all sound different because the intensity or amplitude of the harmonic frequencies varies from each one. This graph shows the note A played on a piano. You can see the fundamental frequency and the harmonic frequencies. Compare that to the same note played on an acoustic bass, on an acoustic guitar, and a clarinet. The frequencies are the same but each instrument creates a unique mixture of those frequencies. This is the harmonic character, and it's what makes each instrument sound unique. I think the physics of harmonics are amazing, and if you're a music lover or an audio nerd like me, you might agree. Let's look at a guitar string to imagine what harmonics look like. When you play a note on a guitar, the string vibrates in a circular motion. At each end are nodes where the string is held in place. In the center is an antinode, where the string vibrates most intensely. The second harmonic is double the frequency and half the length of the fundamental. The third harmonic is three times the frequency and a third the length of the fundamental. Although these images show what each individual frequency looks like, in reality the string is vibrating at all of these frequencies simultaneously to varying degrees. If you've never seen a Kladni plate, I highly recommend you check out a video of one. These are tools that help us visualize the nodes and antinodes that exist in all instruments. A speaker is mounted to a metal plate and vibrates that plate at a specific fundamental frequency. Sand is spread over the plate. In the nodes where there's no movement, the sand settles. The sand is cleared from the antinodes where there's the most intense movement. The patterns created by these plates are beautiful. I'm fascinated by the idea that these patterns exist in all sound sources all around us. You can click here to watch it now. In addition to the harmonic character of an instrument, the envelope also helps determine its unique sound. Envelope is a measure of the change in amplitude or intensity of a sound over time. Although there are four parts that make up the envelope of electronically synthesized instruments, the envelope of acoustic instruments is divided into three parts, attack, sustain, and decay. Attack is the duration of time it takes a note to reach its maximum intensity after being played. Instruments with short attack time include percussion, piano, and pluck string instruments such as harpsichord and guitar. When a note is played on these instruments, the sound quickly reaches its maximum intensity. Instruments capable of a long attack time include woodwinds, brass, and bowed string instruments like violin. Notes played on these instruments can start quiet and slowly build to their maximum intensity. Sustain is the duration of time a note is held at a steady intensity. Snare drums, banjos, and other percussive instruments are examples of instruments with short sustain time. Once the note is played and reaches its maximum intensity, it quickly begins its decay period. Instruments such as electric guitar, bowed string instruments, and wind instruments are capable of long sustain. The musician can hold a note for a sustained period of time at a steady intensity. Decay is the duration of time it takes a note to fall from its sustained intensity to silence. Most percussion instruments have a short decay time. The intensity of the note quickly falls after the sustain period ends. Even if an instrument has a long sustain time, it can still have a short decay time. For example, a violinist could play a long sustained note 
and then abruptly end that note. Cymbals are an example of an instrument with a long decay time. After the initial strike, the intensity of a cymbal's sound slowly falls until it is completely silent. Of course, the musician playing the cymbal could significantly decrease the decay time by silencing it with their hand. There is one more variable that plays into the unique sound of an instrument. It may seem obvious, but even the same note played on the same instrument can sound radically different depending on who is playing it. It's very easy to get obsessed with collecting all of the perfect gear to get the perfect sound, but you must never forget the most important variable, the human behind the gear. Check out the post I wrote on this subject at audiouniversityonline.com. You'll find the same resources there that you saw in this video, plus some more. If you want to learn more about audio, subscribe to my channel. Audio University produces weekly videos to help you understand the best practices of professional audio and the why behind them. Thanks for watching.